You're listening to the Cyberwire Network, powered by N2K. This episode is brought to you by Palo Alto Networks, the leader in cybersecurity. As AI-driven attacks increase, organizations can't afford to have network security that's stuck in the past. Discover how Palo Alto Networks can help you predict what's coming and proactively secure against it with a zero-trust, AI-powered network security platform built to secure whatever, whenever, wherever. To learn more, visit paloaltonetworks.com slash network security platform. When it comes to ensuring your company has top-notch security practices, things can get complicated and time-consuming fast. Now you can assess risk, secure the trust of your customers, and automate compliance for SOC 2, ISO 27001, HIPAA, and more with a single platform, Vanta. Vanta's leading trust management platform helps you continuously monitor compliance alongside reporting and tracking risk. Plus, save time by completing security questionnaires with Vanta AI. Learn why thousands of global companies use Vanta to automate evidence collection, unify risk management, and streamline security reviews. Watch Vanta's on-demand demo at vanta.com slash cyber. That's V-A-N-T-A dot com slash cyber. Russia is accused of jamming a jet carrying the UK's defense minister. Senators introduce a bipartisan Section 702 compromise bill. The Cybercrime Atlas Initiative seeks to dismantle cybercrime. Stop Crypt Ransomware grows stealthier. A Scottish healthcare provider is under cyber attack. Workers in France are at risk of data exposure. CERT BE warns of critical vulnerabilities in ArcServe UDP software. The FCC approves IoT device labeling. Researchers snoop on AI chat responses. A MITRE Harris poll tracks citizens' concern over critical infrastructure. On our Solution Spotlight, N2K President Simone Petrella discusses the shortage of ethical hackers against the rise of AI with IO Active's CTO, Gunter Ullman. And the FTC finds notorious tech support scammers. It's Friday, March 15th, 2024. I'm Dave Bittner, and this is your CyberWire Intel Briefing. During a flight from Poland to the UK, a jet carrying UK Defense Minister Grant Shapps experienced GPS jamming for about 30 minutes, suspected to be orchestrated by Russia. The interference occurred near Russia's Baltic exclave of Kaliningrad, disrupting Internet on mobile phones and forcing the aircraft to employ alternate navigation methods. The Russian Defense Ministry has not commented on the incident. However, Prime Minister Rishi Sunak's spokesperson acknowledged the event, noting that GPS jamming in the vicinity of Kaliningrad is not uncommon and did not compromise the aircraft's safety. The incident took place as Shapps was returning from visiting British troops, participating in Steadfast Defender 2024, NATO's largest military exercise since the Cold War. The exercise tests the alliance's readiness across multiple domains, The jamming incident, labeled as wildly irresponsible by a defense source, reflects the ongoing tensions and the risk of electronic warfare in Eastern Europe, particularly since the Russian invasion of Ukraine. British officials maintain that the plane's safety was not endangered, attributing the jamming to broad Russian interference with satellite communications, affecting not just military but also civilian aircraft. Senators Dick Durbin, a Democrat from Illinois, and Mike Lee, a Republican from Utah, 
introduced a bipartisan bill to reauthorize and reform Section 702 of the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, addressing both national security needs and privacy concerns. The program, set to expire on April 19th, has faced criticism for its incidental collection of U.S. citizens' communications and alleged FBI misuses. The proposed legislation seeks a balance by allowing intelligence searches of the database for Americans' communications with the stipulation of obtaining a warrant for accessing content, except in certain cases like digital attacks. It also restricts intelligence and law enforcement from purchasing Americans' data without a warrant. This move aims to break months of deadlock in Congress over the extension of the surveillance tool, proposing a compromise that upholds security while protecting citizens' rights. The Cybercrime Atlas Initiative, a groundbreaking effort aimed at dismantling the global cybercriminal ecosystem, has entered its operational phase. Launched in 2023 by the World Economic Forum, founding members include prominent entities like Banco Santander, Fortinet, Microsoft, and PayPal. This public-private partnership seeks to map and understand the connections between criminal groups, their infrastructures, and dependencies to disrupt their operations effectively. The initiative has garnered support from over 20 law enforcement agencies, private security firms, financial institutions, NGOs, and academic institutions. Through weekly intelligence meetings and collaborative efforts, the group focuses on profiling threat actors, seizing criminal infrastructures, making arrests, and attributing attacks to decrease the profitability and feasibility of cybercrime. A newly discovered variant of StopCrypt ransomware now employs a complex multi-stage execution process to evade detection. Unlike prominent ransomware that targets corporations, Stop mainly preys on consumers, aiming for numerous small ransoms between $400 to $1,000. It spreads through malvertising and deceptive sites offering free software or game cheats. This latest variant, identified by SonicWall, uses a deceptive initial load, API manipulation for memory allocation, process hollowing for discrete payload execution, and modifies system permissions to ensure persistence, including a task that re-executes the ransomware every five minutes. Despite not engaging in data theft and demanding relatively small ransoms, the widespread distribution and evolving sophistication of StopCrypt pose a significant risk to many individuals. NHS Dumfries and Galloway a Scottish healthcare provider, is addressing a focused and ongoing cyber attack. The specifics of the cyber incident remain undisclosed, but it's anticipated to cause service disruptions. The region, with nearly 150,000 people, may face significant data breach risks, including patient and staff information. Authorities, including the Scottish government, Police Scotland, and the National Cybersecurity Centre have been alerted, and are collaborating to assess the data accessed. A cyber attack on two French employment agencies, France Travail and Cap Employ, compromised the personal information of 43 million French workers, roughly two-thirds of the country's workforce. The breach, which went unclaimed, exposed sensitive data, including names, social security numbers, and contact details, but crucially did not include login credentials, passwords, or bank details. Following the discovery, the agencies alerted the CNIL and initiated a police investigation. The breach, which spanned from February 6th to March 5th of this year, is under scrutiny for potential security lapses and delayed notification to authorities. The incident has sparked warnings about increased risks of identity theft, phishing, and financial fraud, prompting calls for affected individuals to monitor their financial activities and communications closely. The Center for Cybersecurity Belgium warns that three critical vulnerabilities in ArcServe UDP software pose significant security risks to backup and disaster recovery systems. One allows unauthorized users to bypass authentication. Another enables the uploading of malicious files with system privileges, and the third can lead to denial-of-service attacks. These flaws can result in data exfiltration, 
ransomware deployment, and disrupted recovery efforts. While there's no evidence of current exploitation, the release of a proof of concept increases the risk of future attacks. Affected versions are ArcServe UDP 9.2 and 8.1. The Center for Cybersecurity Belgium urges immediate patching, with patches available on ArcServe's support portal, and they recommend enhancing monitoring and detection efforts to safeguard against potential breaches. The Federal Communications Commission has approved the U.S. Cyber Trust Mark, a voluntary label for Internet of Things devices indicating compliance with baseline security standards. This initiative is part of a White House effort and developed with standards from NIST. It aims to guide consumers toward more secure products, thereby reducing vulnerabilities in smart devices. The label will feature a QR code linking to detailed security information about the device. Companies seeking to use the label must meet certain requirements, including listing security configurations and expected software update information. The program, initially focused on consumer IoT devices, may expand in scope, with plans for international recognition and collaboration with other label programs. The initiative has been praised for addressing security concerns, but noted for lacking requirements on encryption and privacy disclosure. Researchers at Ben-Gurion University in Israel have discovered a method to decrypt responses from AI assistants like ChatGPT with notable accuracy, exploiting a side channel in the token sequence transmission process. This vulnerability allows a passive observer in a network to infer the content of encrypted chats, potentially exposing sensitive information. The technique relies on analyzing the encrypted token lengths transmitted by the AI, which correspond to the lengths of the actual words, and then using specially trained large language models to reconstruct the message. This attack can achieve perfect accuracy in deducing responses 29% of the time and can identify the specific topic of 55% of responses. The findings reveal a significant privacy risk in current AI chat services encryption methods, excluding Google Gemini, and highlights the need for improved security measures to protect confidential communications. The research suggests either delaying token transmission or applying packet padding to mitigate the side-channel vulnerability, both of which could impact user experience. A MITRE-Harris poll reveals widespread concern among U.S. residents over the security of the nation's critical infrastructure, highlighting fears of cyber attacks, terrorism, and deterioration due to aging. Homeowners, urban dwellers, and individuals over 27 particularly express apprehension about potential threats to systems crucial for society's functioning, such as energy, water, communications, health care, and financial services. With recent upticks in infrastructure failures, 80% of respondents are worried, identifying energy, water, and communications as the top three sectors affecting daily life if compromised. The poll indicates a public call for both government and private sector involvement in bolstering infrastructure resilience, with 78% attributing responsibility to the federal government, either solely or in partnership with others. Despite this, there's divided opinion on the country's recovery capability post-attack, especially among older generations and rural residents. The survey underscores the urgency for proactive measures to secure essential services against increasing and sophisticated threats. Coming up after the break, on our Solution Spotlight, N2K President Simone Petrella discusses the shortage of ethical hackers against the rise of AI with IOActive's CTO, Gunter Ullman. Stay with us. In the complex world of enterprise identity, securing legacy web apps at scale can be daunting. Strata Identity makes it simple. 
With Strata, you can effortlessly integrate non-standard apps with any identity service, like MFA or SSO, with zero coding and zero hassle. Designed by identity architects for identity architects, Strata works with every vendor, standard and app architecture. This means your apps can now speak modern protocols and integrate seamlessly with your chosen identity services. From securing on-prem web apps to migrating away from outdated identity providers or consolidating them, Strata helps you keep your complex access policies as you modernize your identity infrastructure and get rid of technical debt. Join leading organizations like 3M, Dallas County, and CIBC in securing your apps with Strata. Visit strata.io slash cyberwire, share your identity security priorities, and receive a complimentary pair of AirPods Pro. Offer valid for organizations with over 5,000 employees. Connect today at strata.io slash cyberwire. everybody I want to take a few minutes here and talk about our sponsor Splunk. You know, you need to keep operations humming around the clock, but potential disruptions are everywhere. Splunk helps you predict problems and find and fix issues fast so you can reduce risk and ditch downtime. The world's largest enterprises rely on Splunk's unified security and observability platform to become more efficient, resilient, and innovative. With Splunk, you can react quickly, evolve faster, and be ready for anything. Stay ahead of disruptions. Learn more at splunk.com slash resilience. On this latest edition of our Solution Spotlight, N2K President Simone Petrella discusses the shortage of ethical hackers against the rise of AI, with IO Active's CTO, Gunter Ullman. I'll start by asking the big question first. So is AI a threat or an opportunity when it comes to the ways that we develop and test software? <laughs> well, you know, like any technology, then you have to take the good with the bad. But uh, certainly from, a, you know, from an AI perspective, I'm seeing a lot more good than bad. Um, but we're, we're keeping an eye out about how you know, the miscredence and malcredence and uh, organized crime uh, are abusing it as well. What are some of the specific tasks or processes within coding that you see most affected right now? Well, that's a pretty broad topic. Um, <laughs> I think the, the biggest changes really are, you know, uh, really about almost democratizing much of the advanced coding uh, and the, the, the pace that code can be developed. I, I think is really where we're seeing those, those increases there. But I think from a security perspective, what I'm loving is that there is more guidance that's been provided to those software developers, software engineers, and and how to apply best security practices, a lot more sort of uh, warnings about security, and uh, and hopefully over time, even better, more secure code actually being produced uh, through these systems. So tell me a little bit about what kind of role that AI is playing on the security side of things. Is it creating a, a capacity for more secure code in its creation, or is it actually creating more potential for vulnerabilities that we need a different skill set to help us address? Uh, I think, like all security for the last you know, three, you know, three decades now, uh, every innovation is driving new security needs, but also new uh, skills and tooling. So I think that's just an evolution of the security field in general. But I, I, I think that uh, you know, there's some, just some exciting things we're sort of seeing on the AI front uh, are, you know, in, in terms of uh, sort of co-pilots and augmentation. Right? And uh, I, I think what we're, what we're excited about is the way that those technologies are um, you know, helping to reduce the, you know, reduce the number of vulnerabilities that are there, um, but also help to uh, speed up, uh, you know, speed up the detection of new vulnerabilities in that space. Right? I, I come from a different background originally. You know, I've been using AI and security and from a defense side, and now from the attack side, we're seeing it uh, working, you know, uh, to its fullest. Yeah. Well, and I was going to say, is there anything you can share about how this is impacting the way that you think about things in your role at IOActive today? How is that changing the way that you all do business? I think that if we look at a couple of places, right? So, you know, we're seeing many of the IOActive clients uh, 
you know, deploying more AI systems, right? So uh, whether they are developing AI from the from scratch uh, or they are leveraging you know, cloud-provided services uh, you know, and, and pre-trained AI systems. I think one of the problems that we're seeing is that uh, many organizations don't yet fully understand the, the, the new attack surface that they've opened up uh, and are maybe a little naive about uh, the, the strength of so many of the AI technologies that they're deploying. Uh, so I think we're, we're going through almost like a recap of, you know, 10 years ago of the stealth IT, where everyone was sort of uh, moving on to SaaS services. We're now seeing the same sort of thing reflected with uh, the use of AI. Uh, so, you know, there's been plenty of news about, uh, the, you know, data breaches and uh, uh, loss of intellectual property through that side. But I think what we're most excited about really is the use of that AI systems to provide new set of services. Um, and from, from my side, you know, as we look at IOM Active and sort of researching in this area, really is the, the use of AI technologies to both uh, identify, you know, new flaws and vulnerabilities and coach, you know, developers into, you know, writing more secure code and um, more secure architecture, but also having to develop new AI tools for testing AIs themselves. It's, it's one of these quandaries that, uh, to be able to detect threats and find advanced AIs, you actually have to be able to replicate that AI uh, and use the AI to query that AI to, uh, to understand the nature of the threat. And uh, I think that will be one of the bigger fields uh, going forward. Is that something that you are actively exploring now with your team? Because your team focuses on that testing and kind of red teaming of these software tools, right? So is this an area that you're looking to explore is how AI can be used from a testing and kind of vulnerability identification standpoint? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, IOactive has had like a, you know, almost a quarter of a century of you know, research fuel security service innovation, right? So it's one of the things that brought me to IOactive in the first place. And, you know, we've invested tremendously uh, in, you know, developing these new classes of tools. Uh, I am excited though about, um, the pace of innovation that's going on, right? Uh, in particular, you know, the um, as as more organizations use AI to create their own code and create the new applications, and you know, the democratization of uh, you know codes and application creation, there's just more and more code coming out there, right? And so, uh, having to build a new set of tools that can efficiently detect threats uh, at that code level. Uh, and provide that uh, advice to developers or CISOs or uh, to vending teams. Um, and you know, doing that at the pace and the size that's necessary, um, it's cutting edge AI now. Yeah. I'm curious what you see as some of the challenges to that actually becoming a reality. And the reason I ask is because I know from experience working with a lot of organizations as well that the developers and on the technology side of the house are often under a completely different hierarchy and structure in the organization than security. And so it's it's not for lack of will, but sometimes, you know, security wants to have more rigorous development, like secure development cycles, more testing, but it's not within their direct control. So do you see this as something that's going to help overcome that challenge or is that going to remain? I think it's somewhere in between. I, I think that the challenge part gets removed. Uh, I don't see any reason why the ownership for these tools or you know, the ownership for security can't be distributed uh, in this space. You know, for example, you know, we there's been an awful lot of articles about using co-pilot technologies to develop code and whether that code is more secure than you know, an elite software developer. Today, you can sort of treat those co-pilot systems as if they were a fifth grader. Um, what people are you know, sort of forgetting is that you know, that fifth grader is actually only a year old. Next year, um, maybe they're going to be a tenth grader, right? So I think they're sort of forgetting about the evolution path that we're on. The other side of this is that the, the tooling is just getting smarter for the inspection of code, but also the guidance and I think one of the key pieces really is where the technology allows us to move from, you know, here is a big long list of 200 vulnerabilities that all look roughly the same uh, in your code. Uh, and every single one of them has a pro forma description of what it is and what to go fix it versus, you know, from an AI perspective, tuning that content, you know, um, triaging that content and arriving at, you know, here are the things in the developer code uh, for the developer in the language that they use and the vocabulary that they use 
that they now need to go fix uh, and the ability to verify right there and then uh, that the code is secure. Yeah, I think one of the things we talk about a lot on on this segment is, you know, how advances like AI, what impact does it have on the existing skill shortage that we have in cybersecurity, but also in coding? And, and how does it change the skill requirements? What are we looking at? So you just described on the development side that it actually might eliminate the need for only experienced coders or at least minimize that, but then there's more prompting. How to, like, what are the skills that you sort of foresee on the development side that AI is going to kind of help us evolve into needing in our new workforces? And what's that converse on the security side? What is that going to change in the profile of what we're looking for in our teams on security? I think from a security perspective, uh, you know, the industry has suffered for the last decade at least that there are no real entry-level jobs uh, for security professionals nowadays. You know, automation uh, has removed most of those jobs. Um, so the entry level into cybersecurity is quite high. Um, I don't think AI is going to make it easier for people to enter the AI. What I do expect, though, is that AI will take those um, early starters, if you like, uh, the, the middle tier of um, security professionals, and elevate them. Uh, through augmentation uh, and through the the knowledge that's available at their fingertips, into the higher echelons uh, for you know, uh, of those security professionals. The same is for for the you know, software developers. I think the the tools themselves. You know, we've seen this evolution of tooling um, over the last you know, twenty years, where today about seventy five percent of vulnerabilities in you know in a massive source code can be detected through AI and you know, automated processes. I expect that over the next couple of years, it's probably going to reach about 90%. But that remaining 10% is really, really hard. Uh, and it will be you know, beyond the, in quotes, the, the average um, you know, penetration tester or code reviewer. It will be beyond the average human with the augmentation uh, and will rely more on highly specialized, highly experienced professionals. So there's almost a, a you know um, a stretching at the ends uh, for the the you know the most experienced people. But I, I would offer one thing that I think is very very interesting here is that in the cybersecurity world we've always been very short or been very poor of uh, having uh, female representation uh, and having the, you know a um, a diverse workforce in the space. What we're largely predicting is that there's a high probability that the future of coding um, and the coding language will actually be English. Right, uh, and uh, I think you know what we're seeing with the, the growth of prompt engineering, and the way it's rapidly transforming software development and you know, uh, security assessment. I think women traditionally have had a you know stronger, more mature communication skills, uh, and so prompt engineering and some of the new AI interfaces. I think we're going to see um, more women entering the the field and being more successful in the uh, in both the software development uh, and in the security field because of AI in this field. That's IO Active's Gunter Ullman speaking with our own N2K president, Simone Petrella. And finally, the past few months have seen a noteworthy uptick in enforcement activity from the Federal Trade Commission. In their latest effort, the FTC is imposing a $26 million settlement on two notorious tech support scammers, Restoro and Reimage. These firms, operating out of Cyprus and previously the Isle of Man, played on consumers' fears with bogus Windows pop-ups, tricking them into thinking their computers were riddled with viruses. The scam didn't stop at selling useless software. No, it dove deeper with victims coerced into calling a hotline, only to be further swindled by telemarketers peddling even costlier technical support. These scams brazenly target mainly older adults, milking tens of millions from those least capable of defending themselves against such high-tech deceit. The settlement includes a directive for Restoro and Reimage to cease their tactics, But one can't help wonder about the lasting damage and the countless consumers who've fallen prey to their schemes. This payout is a step in the right direction, but the fight against such predatory practices is far from over. 
A tip of the hat to the public servants at the FTC fighting the good fight. And that's the Cyberwire. For links to all of today's stories, check out our daily briefing at thecyberwire.com. We'd love to know what you think of this podcast. You can email us at cyberwire at n2k.com. N2K Strategic Workforce Intelligence optimizes the value of your biggest investment, your people. We make you smarter about your team while making your team smarter. Learn more at n2k.com. A quick program note. We've got a special edition podcast dropping this Sunday that dives into the newly released NICE framework for cyber workforce development. It's an interesting series of conversations, so be sure to check it out. Be sure to check out this weekend's Research Saturday and my conversation with Robert Duncan from Netcraft. The research we're discussing is titled Fishception, Send Grid Abused to Host Phishing Attacks Impersonating Itself. That's Research Saturday. Check it out. This episode was produced by Liz Stokes. Our mixer is Trey Hester with original music by Elliot Peltzman. Our executive producers are Jennifer Iben and Brandon Karp. Our executive editor is Peter Kilpie, and I'm Dave Bittner. Thanks for listening. We'll see you back here next week. When it comes to ensuring your company has top-notch security practices, things can get complicated and time-consuming fast. Now you can assess risk, secure the trust of your customers, and automate compliance for SOC 2, ISO 27001, HIPAA, and more with a single platform, Vanta. Vanta's leading trust management platform helps you continuously monitor compliance alongside reporting and tracking risk. Plus, save time by completing security questionnaires with Vanta AI. Learn why thousands of global companies use Vanta to automate evidence collection, unify risk management, and streamline security reviews. Watch Vanta's on-demand demo at vanta.com slash cyber. That's V-A-N-T-A dot com slash cyber.